get back in the game, right? So fast forwarding through all this really cool stuff, uh, because we just don't have the time for it. Yeah. Um, you know, so I give you some tools to combat it. So I end up and I went to Navy flight school, these twists, these turns. I end up in the US Coast Guard uh, by these amazing. If you get my book, it's a quick read. I'm not trying to make a killing off and I sell for like 10 bucks. Um, you can read it cover to cover from like LA to New York. And I made it that way. It's very stream of conscious. And you'll hear this crazy story of how I end up in the Coast Guard. Everybody's like, oh, what are you doing? You're missing out because I got myself back into flying. I was still like, I was still very tense. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, there, there, there's, there's a story. I end up going to the Coast Guard and um, I get in there in August of 2001. And everybody's like, oh, you're missing out on all the seniority numbers, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, mm-hmm. September 11th came and shut the airlines down. So, yeah. you, you know, I followed this whole thing and it worked out for me. I go to the Coast Guard. I end up going down to Navy flight school. I'm competing against the best in the world. Right. So after my plane crash, I'm sorry, I get excited in my throat. <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> After my plane crash, Sloan, I had changed so much as a person, my whole outlook, everything I perceived. Yeah. And I mean, I have a big crack down the front of my head. Um, I mean, I hit the ground at 200 miles an hour. The military is like, were you knocked out? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> you hit the ground at 200 miles an hour. I mean, you're going to get knocked out. Right. My recruiter said, don't say a word. So I didn't. But I was like, no, and, you know, because you have to go through all kinds of testing. Right, right. With the, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so, uh, you know, so I went from there and then I get down to Navy Flight School and I actually thought there was something mentally wrong with me, which is arguably, I hear I'm crazy, but it's a good crazy, apparently. <laughs> so I go down to Navy Flight School and I compete against the best in the world and I come out at the top of my class. And the really cool part was, is I wasn't competing against everybody else like they were. I was competing against myself because yeah. when I started out, my legs were like straight out on those rudder pedals. And I was just trying to, I was bare knuckling it through. I just, I was gritting it out. And I would, what if, and I would, what if, what if this yeah. happened? What if the wing falls off? What if we catch on fire? And we'd go out for an hour of flight and I'd come back just exhausted. Everybody else come back be like, that was so cool. But I had right. what if every scenario. So my mind was so grown to anything that came my way, I was ready for it because I'd already what if every single scenario and right. I was working 10 times harder at my craft. And then when I came out like that, um, you know, not that you need self-validation from the outside world, because I really speak against that. I talk a lot about self-doubt right. and personal and professional. Mm-hmm. Um, but at that time in my life, I thought everybody like in my inner circle was just hiding the fact that there was something screwy with me. But when the United States Navy put those wings on me in the Coast Guard and I graduated at the top and, you know, like that was a self-validation saying, dude, you're all right. Like, because yeah. I had changed so much as a person and I've just continued to grow and grow and grow and push myself because when you come that, when you touch death like that, you just realize how important every single day of your life is and how not get, like we talk about how not guaranteed it is. But when I come in there and you see me and see how just, normal and average I am you, you know the first thing everybody goes through something like this I'm sure you went through this like that happens to somebody else somebody else finds out they're never going to walk again not yeah. Sloan yeah and it was the same yeah. thing with Dave can you relate yeah. to that for sure 100 <clears throat> percent. and I think you know even when, you, when you're talking about those crashes and those um I, I recently lost my dad I've, I've talked about that on the show and Sorry, those crashes in thank you and those crashes in life what I realized through, I mean I'm realizing many things and changing in many ways. But when you talk about the crashes, um, nobody's going to go through life without crashes, right? And th- th- it's, it's part of life. And what I realized through my recent loss was that I didn't do anything wrong. Like I had this feeling that I had done something wrong because that happened. And I know um, I've talked with other friends who are not necessarily losing somebody, but when there's the crashes in life, we always I do. I'm not going to speak for everybody. I'll speak for myself and the people I know, but there's a tendency to look back and say, well, what did I do wrong? How could I have prevented this? How could I have done something different? Right. And in your case, I mean, the acts of God, right. The the deer running out in front, like, I mean, nothing you couldn't, that was, that was the path that was going to happen. That that was what was going to happen. And I, I just wanted to bring that up for that reminder that, um, because I think when we go through, like you were talking about with, um, you know, having, um, what you went through with the, the shaking and the, in getting yourself back into it. Um, 
when we add that extra layer of guilt or, or um, regret on top of what we're already feeling, it makes getting through that like even a million times harder, right? Because we're adding this other layer on by telling ourselves these stories. I talk a lot here on the show about stories. We're adding these stories that are not true. They're not beneficial and they're, they're doing nothing to help us move forward. 100%. I mean, I could just feed off you all day. It's like, you know, exactly what you were talking about we have so little control over life Mm -hmm. and that's that's another point that i convey but the way that you react is everything because you know if i went through one plane crash and you had me on the because my first plane crash it's an amazing story like it will will make it will tingle you um you you know and i tell it i tell it in my keynote and you know if i came if i told that story and i came in here and i said sloan i just gave up you know, because I went out and I was selling boxes. I, I was literally selling boxes. And, and you'd be like, <clears throat> okay, Dave, you know, I mean, you're, I, I can understand, you know, I can understand what happened. And, and uh, you, you know, I can understand you didn't want to fly anymore. But think of what I would have missed out on. Yeah. And, and I talk about winning. Winning is momentous. You know, you, you get that momentum of winning. And when something holds you up or hits you and, and it's big in life, you know, a loss or something. And, and if it hits you, and you allow that just to just to just to grab a hold of you because it will try. It did. Yeah. I mean, we're talking my at rest heart rate for like a year and a half was like 125, 130 beats per minute. Oh, wow. like, I mean, I couldn't even calm down for I mean, it was ridiculous. I'm having anxiety attacks, which I think are heart attacks. And I'm laying on an EKG machine as a young man who was a college football. Player. I mean, I was athletic. Right. And I'm like, Doc, I'm having another heart attack. And he's looking at me. He's like, your heart's fine. I think you need to go to the third floor. It's always the third floor, isn't it? <laughs> he goes, it's up in your head. I'm sorry, guys. I got uh, I got the desert. I'm in Las Vegas and I live in Florida. And let me oh, yeah. tell you, that is two completely different allergy groups. <laughs> yeah. I've been taking the Claritin. Uh, I've been here for two days. I've been taking them every night. And it's really dry there. Like if you're used to humidity, like to go to a place that's really dry is like, I don't even know how to deal with this. <laughs> I was over at the convention center. I go, hey. <laughs> I go, where's the steam room? I need some steam in me because <laughs> right. I was drying right. out, but uh, it's just different. You get used to it, but, but, but you're exactly right. Then my third C is just what you talked about. It's committing. It's committing yeah. to, 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 it's committing to self-leadership, to self-development. You know, everybody's looking for these magic bullets on leadership and they don't exist. And I, and I mean, I've been through, I, I've been through all the three branches of the service. I've been through their leadership schools. <clears throat> I've been through civilian. I've been a C level executive at a company. And I mean, you know, yeah, you can have management tools and those are all fine. And that's not what Dave comes in to give you. I, I, you know, if you want management tools, you can find those in other places. I come in and I turn you inside because look, I built myself so strong. I went from just being average because I was given the opportunity. Now <clears throat> I could have went in two different very ways. I was very successful at selling boxes. You, you know, but I was driving down the road one day and, and I just closed the big account. And I said, Dave, what are you doing? You're a pilot. Yeah. You need to get back in the air. Yeah. You, you know, but I was scared. I was in my company. It was a minivan. <laughs> this is a general manager gave us minivans. <clears throat> a young guy, I'm in this company minivan. I just closed this huge deal. You know, I'm getting all kinds of commission. But I was like, man, I got to get back in that air. Yeah. And in, in the style of me, it was, it's got to be like full go. Like I got to go compete against the best in the world. We're going to do loops. We're going to do rolls. And then I come out of there. I end up flying for the Coast Guard, and those guys are awesome, man. But what they do on a daily basis is like heroic, you know? Yeah, it's like, yeah for sure. You know, like who flies into a hurricane? You know, they're like, hey, we got a search and rescue case. I did three. I mean, you know, it's like you're flying into the hurricane. I'm talking 100 feet off the deck in a 30,000 pound jet. You know, it's not like you're way up in the air. I mean, you're right. down in this thing. And um, I, lo- I loved it. My, my time and experiences. But so obviously, you know, somebody who was scared to fly, couldn't even get on the back of a, a U.S. airplane to go out to his cousin's wedding in California. So the progression, excuse me, then I got to the Air Force and I was so laid back by then that they would laugh because um, in one of the manuals that said micro napping was approved. And as soon as we leveled <laughs> off, I would unloosen my boots and zip down my flight suit and I'd be like ready to micro nap. So I'd gone from like so stressed out to so calm. Yeah. <laughs> and then I got bam. And it was my test, you know. So I got that next curveball. And boom, 
you know, and it took me two weeks. It took me two years and two weeks to recover from the second one because it's that momentum we're talking about, you know, and it's like it was a lot to take in because, you know, the boom said we're five feet from taking off the back of the tail. It's like, wow, they take the tail off of that airplane. We're done. I don't care. There's nothing you can do to control an airplane when that tail comes mm -hmm. off. You're dead. You're mm -hmm. me. And, um, you know, and then uh, and then I went through there and some situations lined up. Like I said, my book's a quick read. And then, boom, I find myself with this brand new wife. And we're living in a hotel. I go from being like the stand officer, I, instructor pilot, evaluator pilot. Like I, I did all these things and I'm living in a hotel room. I mean, completely unfair. Like, I mean, it, it, it's the story is funny. I mean, it, it was a paperwork snafu because of an email chain in the DO, the Department of Homeland Security and the Department of Defense and then not meshing my, my package together. And I unfairly oh, got geez. kicked out. Like yeah. I got kicked out. Like they're like, oh my God, they got me back. They got me promoted, <laughs> got me back in. They called me big slick. But it was like, so I found myself living in a hotel in Pensacola with a brand new wife. I mean, literally like a micro hotel, like a, uh, she, she's, she's a sweetheart. And she goes to me, she goes, she, she called me up and I'm Ubering. I'm driving for Uber. I mean, I'm like flat on my rear end. Right. And she goes, she goes, honey, she said, the girl next door has a lot of boyfriends. I said, well, she's a prostitute. I said, but it's okay because the people on the other side are drug dealers. So I don't think anybody's going to mess with us. <laughs> like I'm working to try to, you know, to <coughs> yeah. really try to rebuild us. And we go from there to, to I go to a company and a construction company selling the construction equipment, become the number one salesman in like a big company, like a national company. And we're making money hand over fist. And I became the vice president of another company in sales. And, you, you know, just it, it's just but, you know, again, there's no magic bananas that my, my strategy in my rebuilding, it works no matter where I'm at in life. And now that I know that. I'm sitting in such a great place because I've done a couple of things though. I've also don't dealt with my own mortality, which is a huge issue that, you know, that you have to look inside and deal with. And I talk about that in my book about, mm -hmm. you know, stripping down and rebuilding myself literally from the foundation all the way back up and then moving myself forward where, you know, it's been, it's funny because this one girl down in, uh, in Miami, we, we flew together in the Coast Guard. She said, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen when Dave's in the jet. <laughs> you, you know, because I mean, there's many more things that I've gone through. And then and then, you know, I'm talking about, you know, losing a kid, going through a nasty divorce and all, all those, you know, things of life that you have to go through. But it's all in the way that you bring yourself out of it. And that's exactly what you're talking about. So when I talk about committing to self-leadership, it's not this, you know, th this 30,000 foot view. It's like right here. And you got to grind it out because, yeah. You, you know, life, life can be tough, you know, life can, life can hold you down and people can tell you, you have post, you know, you have the disorder or something like that. But if you turn that word around, say I have post-traumatic growth and now look at me, I've grown because of these opportunities, instead of it beating me down and stopping me, it's actually made me live I, what I believe well beyond where I'd, I'd ever have gone. I mean, my high school yeah. guidance counselor told me that I like fast girls and fast cars i should go work in the mill i mean you know what i'm saying like yeah well yeah know, so I mean, it's just been an amazing progression because of the way that i committed to myself and in, in, in the beating what was put in front of me just like you did yeah. with your with your foot yeah well and what i love about your story i mean your energy is just amazing like it's so contagious but what i love is that you had that calling inside of you to get back to flying when you were selling the boxes and you didn't ignore it right i think a lot of times people ignore whatever is calling them and they spend their whole life fighting the calling and then get to the end of their life and are so unhappy that they didn't actually you know go after what it was that they truly wanted but the other thing that strikes me when you talk about that committing to self-leadership too is that we're the only ones that can take ourselves through it right you can go to all the training you can read all the book you can do all the stuff but unless you're willing to commit to yourself and take yourself through that process you're going to end up staying right where you are i mean we are the only one we're the ones we're looking for right how many times have people heard that right you are the one you are looking for you're the one that takes yourself through it and hopefully the our conversation today has inspired everyone listening to do that because it, there were so many times in your story, you could have gotten down, you could have ended up doing the opposite of what you wanted, but you didn't, you made the choice, you committed and you got, and now you're here to, to tell us these amazing stories and motivate others. So it's just amazing. And I want to congratulate you for that. I just love hearing your story. Thank you. And I talk about, you were talking about the voices in your head. And I also talk about that in combating, you know, that, that we do, we have these voices and, you know, Hey, I want to, I want to fly again. And oh, don't you remember you crashed, how bad it hurt. Yeah. You, you, you know, we go back and forth and it's that fear. That fear yeah. just knocks so many people down where once you address those fears, the, the sky's the limit. And, and when I see the have and the have nots, I've gotten to work with some really 
like people that have just succeeded in life. And I'm talking in different ways. I'm talking, you know, I, I, I've seen a hero go to heroin and come back to being a hero, you, you know, like, and, and, and I've worked with, you know, people that are worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah. And the number one thing in every single story of the haves and have nots is follow through. Yeah. It's the people that actually follow through and, you know, we can get started, but that's what I talk about that commitment, you know, that committing to self-leadership and growing yourself 